Welcome back. Come down to the garage today to finally do the uh, rear diff oil and an oil change that's sort of 900 miles overdue now. Firstly, just have a quick look at the MOT failure from last video. This is a rear driver's side tyre. As you can see, it looks pretty decent to be honest, apart from it's slightly worn here, but it's got uh, have a look. four mil, four mil, four mil, and three mil on the inner. So decent tread left across the whole tire. But this inner edge completely coming away. You can see through to the cords. Uh, that is because the rear camber was way out after changing the rear shocks and not getting the tracking done. So annoyingly, it would have done another few thousand miles. But just lucky it didn't blow out, to be honest. So I've got new tyres on the rear. Went for the same again. They've been a decent tyre. They've worn well, apart from that. But that's my own fault. Uh, apart from that, we had come down midweek because this driver side caliper I had trouble with it before and uh, completely seized on on the motorway. And uh, well. So yeah, come down, redid that. And so the first things first, got to get this car up on jacks. I've had to reverse onto some wood. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult on the E92 to get. I haven't got a low jack to get under the front. And the bumper's quite sort of flimsy, it catches the jack. So I'll just put it up on some wood. I need to get it level to do the rear diff. So we'll just get it up in the air and then drain both at the same time. It shouldn't take too long. All right, let's get the jack out. Right, cars up in the air. Uh, level, I guess, if you've got funny eyes. Uh, but level enough for now. I'm going to drain the front um, and then move the back up slightly more. Pull the diff oil out. Hoping that this little suction device will make do. It's worked on the 4x4s, but. Whether that hole will fit in the diff, I don't know. Might have some other tubing laying around. Uh, so we'll drain the front and drain the rear. Firstly, try not to drop this in the oil, especially if you've just driven the car somewhere or recently and you have to fish around in hot oil. Uh, secondly, it comes out of a bit of an angle. So it'll sort of spray this way. So don't position the bowl directly under the drain plug. Made that mistake the first time. While that's draining, um, I'll take a look at the wrist. You'll need a 14mm hex socket like so. Not sure if this is a magnetic plug, like some have obviously to catch metal filaments, etc. Um, but the top's pretty clean anyway, so if it is, that's a good sign. Uh, there's no drainage hole on the diff, only one hole in, one hole out. Um, so we're going to use this, which has been successful in the past for the Taras and artificially inseminating animals, I think. So we're going to give that a bash. First loads out. Quite an awkward angle to get 
get the hose down into the bottom part of the diff. But it's definitely bringing some out. Here's a quick sample of the uh, rear diff oil. Now it's all emptied. That's 115,000 miles. Um, and this is some brand new diff oil. So quite a difference. BMW say it's sealed for life. Um, everyone seems to say change it at 100k or change it every 50k. Um, so I'm just going to pump new fluid back in. Uh, I might use the I might use a pump or the bottles come with this handy little filler neck so I might be able to do it with that. This old pump is quite a faff about to be honest. I can see now why people get the electric pumps that run a line from the diff into a pump and they line out again and you just switch it on and leave it. Leave it to go. Should have paid 20 quid really and not been so cheap. I'm going to save myself a couple of hours. Just let the oil drain out of this area and then we'll clean up all the old oil before we put the new filter in. Otherwise you're putting a new filter into dirty oil in the filter housing. The old filter, looking pretty knackered. Uh, all the fins get bent, don't know how. I guess it's the hot oil rushing through. New clean one, well, a bit grubby now. Ready to go in. Um, and you've got the new O-ring for that threaded bit there, and then a tiny little O-ring on the end there. Uh, oh, and you also get a new washer for the sump plug, so don't forget to change that. Alright, new filter's all built up, uh, got a new O-ring on the end, new filter, new o-ring there and so we chuck that back in do the sump plug up underneath fill it back up seems about as tight as it was last time so I hope that's okay. I never quite know how tight to do these. Yeah. Oil's finished draining. Pretty sure more oil came out last time. I think I had to use two um, washing up bowls. So maybe it was down down a litre maybe. This engine seems to use maybe a litre every couple of months. Um, I don't know whether that's just the engine or whether there's a slight and leak on the rocker cover or something like that. Weird patch of scum on top. No mayo on the cap. It's like a instinct once you've had a Clio for 10 years. Always checking the cap. Don't think the head gaskets are very likely to go on there. Right, oil's all topped up. Now, I haven't checked the level yet on the computer. I'll do that in a sec. It's a bit annoying having no dipstick, but what can you do? Uh, I gave the engine bay a bit of a clean as well because it was absolutely filthy. It's been a bit neglected under there recently. And rear diff's done. Topped up to what I think is the right level. So I've just got to drop the car back down now, and then we're done. Alright, car's all back down on the deck. Um, well, as close as you can get it. I'm just going to move 
with the tyre out of the way. Been using that today while I've been working on this. That's it for another week.